Nigerian atheist Mubarak Bala sentenced to 24 years in prison for blasphemy. On April 2nd, Mubarak Bala, the president of the Humanist Association of Nigeria, was sentenced to 24 years in prison for his alleged crime of blasphemy. On April 25th, um, 2020, Mubarak was on uh, Mubarak on Facebook said that the Prophet Muhammad was a terrorist, or he compared the Prophet Muhammad to a terrorist. I'm using coded language because of uh, YouTube, but I think we all know what I mean. Three days later, he was arrested. Prosecutors in the Kano High Court accused Mubarak Bala of insulting the Prophet Muhammad, which quote, caused a breach of the public peace, to which Bala responded by maintaining his innocence and denounced the charges against him. Bala was not granted access to a lawyer until five months after he was arrested. In March 2021, a hearing was made for his charges without him present in court. His first court appearance was in February this year. In court, Bala requested to change his plea to guilty to the surprise of his legal team. Leo Igwe, the founder of the Nigerian Humanist Association, said that Bala changed his plea because, it, because, quote, it was impressed on him by authorities in Kano that the only way his family could be safe was if he admitted that he was guilty. With Bala's conviction, atheists and humanists in Nigeria are now in danger of being thrown into jail just for expressing their views. Um... Okay, that's crazy. 24 years for simply, I mean, can you remind people what he said? Like, by, by the way, guys, this has been going for a couple of years. Um, he had he had been held without any charges, without any access to a lawyer for a, whole, for a very long time. For, for, for a long time, he was even missing. People didn't even know where he was being held. Um, and it was even diff difficult to defend him because there was not even any charges. And after how long they finally pressed charges? Like how long did he was in jail until they finally come up with charges? Like a year and a half. He's been in jail for like two years. Two years. Okay. And now they come in, come out with this. 24 years. For what? What did he do exactly? For people who don't Blasphemy. know. Blasphemy. Blaspheming against the Prophet Muhammad. But what did he say? Like, I just want people to so, realize how insignificant what he said was. He, what I originally saw as what was so offensive to people was he made a post where he was talking about um, either a, a local pastor who claims to be a prophet or local um, radical violent extremist elements um, and made a comparison between them and the Prophet Muhammad. So this comparison between the Prophet Muhammad and these violent radicals, um, you know, was was such a disturbing breach of peace. What, so I, what happened was he made this post and then it was actually a, um, a few lawyers who took it upon themselves to file a petition to the police. And so it wasn't even the police who, like, this w uh, initially took the first action. It was, like, these lawyers who went and just took it upon themselves to go after him. And um, so I remember reading what I, it was the petition that these lawyers filed to the police. Or at least what has, was put forward in the public as the original petition, right? Like, I can't 100% verify it. And in it, they basically talk about how... Mubarak Bala needs to be arrested. It needs to be prosecuted because if it doesn't, then it it will incite Muslims to do violent things. So basically, like, it seemed to me like a blame the victim argument. Like, he's the one who did this. This will cause Muslims to be violent. Therefore, he's the one that needs to be prosecuted. Which seems to me, if I was a Muslim, I would be offended because that belies an incredibly low opinion of Muslims. Like it, it is, it kind of feels like a self-report, like that you are saying, we, we know that Muslims are going to react like violently to this. And that's why this person who hasn't done anything violent needs to be prosecuted and have action taken against him. And it's just evolved into this whole situation that we see to this day. And what's really unfortunate is that, so this recent announcement of his sentencing received huge coverage around the world. It was in the Guardian, it was in the Associated Press, it was in Al Jazeera. And um, 
based on the way it's been reported on, it seemed to me like this just happened out of the middle of nowhere in the middle of a court hearing. Like, again, this is my interpretation of what I've been reading, but it really seems like in the middle of the proceedings, Mubarak Bala just got up and was just like, I'm going to plead guilty. And his lawyers are right there like, what? Like, here we go. In court on Tuesday, to the surprise of his legal team, Bala requested to change his plea to guilty, one of his lawyers said. Just suddenly, he changed his plea and pleaded guilty to the whole 18 count charges. We were in shock. The lawyer said Bala might have seen the guilty plea as a way to end the case. Quote, it feels like he just felt he should just know his fate. He didn't know when this would come to an end. He may have thought that the guilty plea would lead to some leniency, but the judgment was harsh. Um, and so, you know, it, it kind of, everyone who's reporting on this case and everyone who's talking about it is talking about it in this sense of like, there have been reports that there have been threats against his family. I, I haven't been able to verify that. But, and then either from prison authorities, from other authorities, or from these authorities telling him about how there are these threats and kind of like making implications and just saying, you know, you should just go ahead and plead guilty to protect them. You know, your family is still in Nigeria. We still know where they are. You should just, you know, really close this case. Because the Nigerian justice system is notoriously overburdened and takes an extremely long time to actually um, find the conclusion of a case. Not to mention the fact that he was already illegally held in detention for two years, but it could drag on for much, much, much longer, right, to actually fight this all the way through because his case has been subject to a repeated adjournments. And um, so it seems like he maybe just reached a breaking point. Where he was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that I'm guilty. Like, I just want to get this over with. And again, the way that the the Guardian reported on it, as if, again, this is reporting and saying, you know, maybe he thought, thought that just you know what, you're right. I'm guilty. I, I'll, I'll, you know, that that'll look favorably upon me. They'll let me get off on some things. No, they threw the book at him. The whole, the whole nine yards. You know, you might be, you know, not knowing the bat, what's going on behind the scenes. Um, you know, I might be tempted to say, like, that's a very bad idea to do something and surprise your own lawyers, right? Um, and make a decision in the court without actually discussing it with the lawyers ahead of time, right? And e even, but again, we don't know what his situation is. He might be dealing with, you know, family threat issues that we don't, that makes it impossible for him to even discuss things with his own lawyer. Like we have no idea the amount of stress. And I mean, even if we made a mistake though, like we can't, we don't know how we would act ourselves under such amount of stress and anxiety, especially when you're not the only one who's being targeted, your family is as well. Like, it's just like, in, and after two years of being in prison for, for something like this, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe at some point you just crack and you just like, I just want this to be over. I don't know. Like you're, you just don't want to deal with the whole mess. And, but now imagine being like, I just want this to be over. And then you get told that, yeah, okay, here's 24 more years of you having to deal with all of this crap. Man, guys, it's this brutal. is it's so brutal. And it, by the way, I don't know if people understand how amazing Mubarak Bala is as an individual. Like, he is somebody who really cares about secularism, free speech, um, somebody who dedicated his life for humanist values, somebody that didn't hold back on what he had to say. Um, and now he's paying such a heavy price for it. Like, this is not just like a random atheist that didn't, you know, like said something. I mean, even if he was, he, he would deserve a lot of protection because this is not fair. But it's just a, even extra hard breaking knowing that how good of a person and how how much this man's tried to sacrifice for for making his country a better place for for more people you know what i mean like um and now he's paying such a high price for it and his family as well 
it's just so unfortunate and it makes it harder for other activists to consider this line of activism to make i mean nigeria guys nigeria is such an important country so especially important. because yeah especially because of the sheer number of people that are there and the rules there is going to affect m much more people than many other countries like nigeria i don't know if people realize that nigeria is the seventh uh, largest country in the world like ranking based on population just seven mm -hmm. number one in africa like if you if you care about africa the most populated country in africa is nigeria and I'm, it's seven, it's number seven right now, but it's predicted to become number four at some point. So Nigeria, like the, the rules in Nigeria is going to affect an astronomical number of people. And if this is the direction that they're going, like, you know, as, as a secular activist, you need to care about Nigeria because again, you have to realize uh, the policies that you're pushing for, the countries that you're taking in, in you know, into consideration to be, to, you know, to raise awareness about the population of them matter as well. So Nigeria is like very high up there. Um, and it's so sad to see this is the direction they're going. I mean, religious tensions in Nigeria is something that is heading in the wrong direction and is, it could get worse. And I just hope that eventually more economic, uh, because Nigeria is going in the right way when it comes to talent, education, trade in that sense it's going in the right way but i don't know if all of this backward rules and the judicial system and religiosity is going to hold back nigeria's potential like so you have to understand like nigeria has a lot of potential going forward as one of the leading countries in africa when it comes to economic power going into the future it could save it could be one of the main contributions to saving the the rest of the continent as well right it could be used as a role model right and when you when we talk about secular activism and free speech and human rights it's not just for the sake of these rights being valuable because we want things to be fair and just it's also because these a better human rights record better property rights records better free speech rules mm -hmm. just unleashes the entire potential of a country in, in economic forms as well like we have a lot of data to show that these rights being protected and respected um is just like opens the gates not just to people just enjoying more rights but also better trade prosperity, better prosperity and everything as well so it's important to fight for your rights in so many ways like even if you don't even if you think even if you're an activist that cares more about people being hungry or people having more income and people living better lives beyond just their rights even if that's what you mainly care about you have to care about human rights not just for the sake of human rights itself but because of also the positive consequences for a country that has better property rights and human rights um and again nigeria is very important going forward like right? the amount of potential that is being withheld because of these i mean imagine how backward and how broken the judicial system of nigeria is they need to clean that stuff up right and you can see how religion is the main source of holding it back right so for people think, who think that we're exaggerating about the role of religion again you need to have free speech and pro good property rights for a country to prosper and nigeria is one of the leading countries in africa that has an amazing potential and the main thing that is holding that that back is religion so you can see by a couple of degrees of separation how religion is having such a negative effect on an mm -hmm. entire continent like you can't think like religious anti-religion activism is not important it's not it's not just about people being right about i don't know metaphysical you know questions about the existence of god it's not just that it's also people's lives indirectly being harmed in, in such in such a degree anyways yeah no those are all very good points um D is saying he's been made an example. Like he's, he's, they're making an example out of him. The whole thing is unconstitutional. Yeah, from top to bottom, his rights have been violated the entire time. His lawyer says that while in prison, Bala has been denied access to healthcare, kept in solitary confinement, and forced to worship the Islamic way. Still, no matter all that, he has refused to convert back to Islam. Like, incredible amazing resolve i'll remind you guys that mubarak ball was previously forcibly put into a psychiatric ward because he renounced islam in 2014. 
Like this man has been through so much and he still stood up so firm in his convictions. And not only after going through that, that's when he went on to become the president of the Nigerian Humanist Association to really stand for the rights and the community of other atheists and non-believers, humanists in Nigeria. Like just incredible, incredible person. Um, and um, Dean at Atheist Republic Cape Town is saying, I feel numb thinking of this case. Shame, the shame of the African continent. Islam has to go. Now, this is kind of interesting to think about is we're very lucky that Mubarak Bala was actually tried in a civil court because Nigeria does have aspects of the law where you can be tried legally under Sharia court and Sharia law. And he being an ex-Muslim and being someone who was being tried in the state of Kano, even though his supposed crime occurred in the state of Kaduna in the south, um, he could have been subject to a, a Sharia court which in that case, he would have had the possibility of the death penalty. So as horrible as this sentence is, we are still lucky that it's not so much worse. Um, but, you know, it's it still feels sometimes, you know, like a, a, a small victory, right, in comparison to 24 years for a Facebook post. 24 years for a Facebook post. Armin and I were discussing when this news came out that that's actually worse than what Raif Badawi received in Saudi Arabia, like for comparison. Yeah, it's exactly. Ludicrous. Um, and um, Eric Olson is saying now it's time to put the pressure on Nigeria till he's free. He should not only be free; he should be helped out of that country. He won't be safe there. Yes, that's one hundred percent true. Um, if there is any means in which his sentence was somehow lifted or he was released from prison, he would need to be evacuated from the country and given asylum somewhere else ASAP. Um, I've heard online from people who are familiar with this case, again, I cannot verify this, that actually at the time of when he made that Facebook post, um, that he was attempting to apply for asylum and attempting to escape Nigeria when this whole thing started. Um, and for some reason, there were like aspects of that that were getting delayed and getting stopped. Um, but yes, he, he does need to be granted asylum immediately. I think if there was going to be a, a, I think Canada might have the best processes for granting him asylum before he's able to leave because they have processes that they put in place for Raif Badawi. But obviously that takes a lot of lobbying of, um, to the government. Um. Christopher is saying, Armin, these rights sounded like abstract comments, concepts until I made personal connections with people for whom they are not. Ooh, that's a very good point. Like, you really take these for granted until you talk to people about how just, like, the idea of, like, the rights to property and the rights to free expression or in intellectual property, like, until you understand what it's like to live in a society where you don't have that, you really take it for granted. Um... Ibn Qayyim is saying the literacy rate in Nigeria is only 66%, one of the lowest in the world. Wow. Um, and also saying Nigeria has a lower GDP per capita than war-torn Syria. Is that true? Even all the oil in, even with all the oil in Nigeria, it has, has it, Nigeria remains one of the poorest countries in the world. Okay, so I think this is a criticism of what I had to say because I was talking about Nigeria's direction and its potential given the population, given that they, um, I mean, okay, so statistically, uh, the number of edu liter the literacy rate is low in Nigeria, but they also have some of the most educated uh, people in Africa, right? So those are not contradictory points of view. Also, they have a lot of nigerians that go outside of nigeria they they end up working they they end up being some of the most talented people uh, among the migrants you know in for example united states and they bring back a lot of talent back to nigeria or if they stay in their country that they're in they're bringing sending money back a lot to their family i, I just think that uh, what i'm saying is that this is why i'm talking about nigeria's potential rather than where it's already at right it uh, it is economically and trade wise it is moving and education wise you know there so there's some really good investments being made and there's some things that are moving in the right direction and it that's just the beginning of what it could 
do. And I just say, like, it, I mean, it is a country with a lot of manpower and a lot of untapped talent. Okay, so you're saying... Extremely young population. Extremely young population. And that's what we're saying it's uneducated. That's why I'm saying untapped talent and hungry, hungry for education and a lot of eagerness for... It, it, there's a lot of what Nigeria also has is a lot of eagerness for entrepreneurship, you know, a lot of demand for more, a lot of hunger for knowledge and, you know, new businesses and taking advantage of whatever the world has to offer. Like the, the, the eagerness is there. The mindset is there. The roadmap is there. The international interest is there. And the people there have shown that they are uh, capable uh, you know, so again, so that's what I'm, that's what I was uh, referring to. I'm not talking about whether things are already fantastic mm -hmm. or not, right? Yes. Yeah, there's uh, so much that could be utilized. Um, yeah. I think it is very important to point out that according to the Associated Press, the Kano state government denied any wrongdoing in the trial and said that the judgment could be appealed. So that's one news source I said about how, you know, this judgment could be appealed. There could be further progress on this. I know that Humanist International is still raising money for his legal fund. Um, I don't necessarily know what steps will be taken, but there is that possibility. And I did see people in the live chat saying that, um, you know, we should go protest it at every embassy. Um, I do really appreciate the impetus towards, you know, really demanding that action. And this is a moment where we do need a lot of public attention on this incident and this event and to talk about this issue. I don't necessarily know if going to protest at embassies is the right move right now, because sometimes these situations are very sensitive and going out and taking an all guns blazing approach can actually be harmful for the case. So I would defer to Humanist International, who is the most hands on on his defense about what kind of um, public approach would be the most helpful and safest yeah. for uh, Mubarak and his family. Yeah, so Susanna is not saying that this is not the right approach. She's just saying that we have to see what they tell us is the right approach. So it's, it's sensitive. It's very, yes, it's very respons the most responsible way of going about doing these things. Um, one last thing I also want to say that Nigeria is on the radar of all uh, many religious and political groups as well, right? So Christians are very invested in Nigeria, trying to spread Christianity. Um, a lot of Islamic organizations, Wahhabi ones are very interested. And I know the Islamic Republic of Iran is very interested in Nigeria. And they have they have been very successful in spreading Shiism in Nigeria and growing, they're growing a lot of groups in Nigeria. So given like, these religious and political groups recognize the, you know, how important Nigeria is going to be, both politically and, and economically. Um, and that's why they are investing there, um, trying, ideologically trying to invest there. And that's why we secularists, we need to also step up our game and do the same thing, right? Um, because, you know, we believe that all this religious, religious activism being directed as Nigeria is not good for Nigeria. So coming from outside to Nigeria, I think like it would help like if more secularists were also showing some interest in Nigeria and trying to help Nigeria defend itself against all these, you know, forces. Um, which, by the way, uh, atheists, compared to all the resources these religious institutions and political groups have, atheists and secularists have nothing. Um, so either consider donating to us or Humanist International, which doing which they are the leading humanists. So if you're not comfortable with donating to an atheist organization, which would be us, uh, we highlight these things for, for the same reason. There's also a humanist organization called Humanist International. You could donate to them. They do fantastic work. We're, they have been, they worked with us in the past. Um, they defended our members but when they, when we were attacked in Malaysia in the past. So we we really appreciate their work. Um, and we rely on their reports. And we know there's a professional organization. And they do, we've seen how, like we, in the previous, when we work with them directly, we see how careful and how professional they are with what they do. Mm -hmm. So you could consider donating to Humanist International as well. They truly have an international perspective on things, you know. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, you could also donate to us, link in the description. Um, give us the ammunition to go back to fight against. This is truly a David and Goliath situation, okay? Yeah, uh, but, it's yeah. amazing how much atheist and humanist 
um, organizations, how much we can do with so little a comparison to religious organizations. It's incredible, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here, we just got a donation from a Christian. <laughs> Again, thank you so much, Bread of Life. Um, we're saying I'm comfortable. What, what does that mean? Meaning, because you, oh. you said you might not be comfortable donating to an explicitly atheist organization. Ah, and this Christian so is saying, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, brother. Like, that's very sweet. Okay, thank you for the $5 super chat. I really appreciate that. That's very sweet. Oh, look at this, guys. We have a Christian that's comfortable donating to an atheist organization. That's very sweet. Hey, guys. If you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.